today I will be comparing my three passenger planes. Currently, the only three planes in my passenger plane fleet are the 747, a Lockheed Constellation, and a Cessna 172. Each plane goes down in size from a very large jumbo jet to a medium sized plane to a very small Cessna. Everybody loves it when we start with the smallest. We'll start down here with the little Cessna. This Cessna is fairly simple. It only uses a few pieces and it actually was simple enough that I did a tutorial on it. When it comes to the features on this plane, there are not too many, though it does have a few. One, it is able to stand on its own landing gear pretty easily. You can roll it around like this. Also, another thing that's very interesting about this, and this was pointed out in my last video, but oh well, it has these suicide doors right here, which took quite a bit of effort to get in there as so I can sort of struggle open them. There we are. has these suicide doors here, and I sort of want to add some doors to a smaller plane since I thought that's very necessary. I haven't put a person in there quite yet, but that's sort of where we're sitting at right now with the smaller plane. As I somewhat stated previously, this plane is based off of a Cessna 172. Somebody in my comment section or the comment section of the last video I made pointed out that that's what this plane looked most like. So yeah, I guess that's what we're going for. I was not really designing it off of any particular plane when I built this one. Just sort of a simple Cessna and that's what it turned out looking to be most like. And it's very, very simple, but I want to make sort of a simple plane and I really enjoyed using those blue, transparent blue windscreen pieces to get the effect I wanted. Moving right along, we get to a plane that's a little bit larger. This is the Lockheed Constellation, and I did build it a while ago, though it is still holding its own. And this is one of my favorite planes that I have. It is a medium-sized passenger plane that carries with it a lot of different features. And one of my favorite features on this plane is its very sort of rich interior. The interior of this plane is very nice. In order to access the interior, it's fairly simple. You just pull this off, just like that. Having a good interior on this plane really does add a lot. At the very front here, we have some coins to keep the nose on the ground. Directly behind that is some more weight. And directly behind that, we have the first class area, which has these brown seats to indicate that they're probably made out of a nicer material. I was limited on space at the very front here, so you're gonna have to hold out with me on that one. Coming back here, we have bunks right here. This is where the first class passengers would lay down or get some rest, maybe on a long flight. This thing would cross the Atlantic. I know this thing is pretty tiny, but it would cross the oceans. So that's sort of an interesting point. And directly behind that, we have the economy class. And even the economy class back then was a lot nicer than it is now. It's only two seats wide, and that's all that you really would expect on a plane this big anyway. Directly behind that, we do have the I gotta move the camera here, move the plane. Yeah, directly behind that we have the bathrooms. These bathrooms here do have functioning doors it would open on, the real thing. It's really cramped in there, but it, it functions perfectly fine. And then of course in the very back here we have the, the galley, and this does have quite a few features in it. You can see there is some storage. Oh, it's really hard to get in here, but there is some storage down there. Looks like we have a cream pie right here, a carrot right here. And on this side, we've got a wine glass and some cutlery. This side, we have a sink, and maybe this side, we have a stove. And in the very, very back here, getting tangled up in our wires here, we've got some, you can't see that, can you? We've got some storage, maybe to put some stuff back here. And we can shut these doors to be able to get a full-on experience. They use a dual hinge system. These are the Ninjago arms from the sets back then. I believe they are from the skeletons. It just slides in, just like that. This plane does feature for piston-powered engines, and each one of these has a propeller that has some decals on it to make it look even more realistic. And this is really one of my first four-engine planes. Getting a four-engine passenger plane is very, very hard with LEGO and takes a lot of skill. That's all that I really have for the Lockheed Constellation. Towering over all of these builds is the Spiggle 747 in the back. Compared to both the Lockheed Constellation and the Cessna 172, the 747 is huge. It is just absolutely ginormous. It looks like you could fit about maybe 10 of these Cessna 172s across the wing. For a very long time, this plane held the world record as the largest passenger plane in the world. The good old 747 is rocking four of those turbofan jet engines. It also has an absurdly large number of doors. One of the key selling points of this plane back in the day was its upper lounge that allowed passengers to cruise in comfort. 
Before we go too deep into one of my most favorite builds, I wanted to show you this little air stairs here. That was made custom just for the 747. As you can see, it looks pretty ridiculous next to either one of these planes. On its own, the 747 is just absolutely massive. It's about five and a half feet wide and about six feet long. For the main roof, I do use these five by six panels, a lot of them. These were a good substitute for tiles and made this build a lot lighter. Speaking of an absurd waste of tiles, you can see the wings here are fully tiled in light bluish gray. And they also use some curved slopes in there to get that really curved and very slick looking effect. This plane is so big it requires four sets of landing gear to stand. The doors on the 747 are just like those on the Constellation, just a little bit larger. On the top of the plane you have some greebling, this little fin up here, and a little bit of light. This just adds a lot of detail to a very large model. The flaps on this plane are fully functioning and can be seen in the full tour for this plane. As I said before, some of the most important parts of a plane are the interior. So this little part here can be removed to access the pilot section. In order to balance properly, the next thing we're gonna pull off is the tail, just like so. You're gonna wanna pull off the nose. The nose can just be removed in a few separate pieces, just like this. The last major part of the plane that needs to be removed is this major fuselage section here that is the roof of the plane. This is a fairly simple one to remove. You just have to stick your hands in and pull it right out. Ugh. It's a fairly large piece, but once it's off, it reveals the entire interior of the 747. Wow, that's huge. Once you open it up, you get to see the full entirety of the 747, including its spiral staircase with its first class lounge, all its passengers, all its economy seats, and even the bathrooms in the very back. This is not the complete tour for the 747. That video can be found in my channel page, so be sure to go check that out. Each one of these planes has their own video. This video is just comparing my passenger planes as of right now. I hope to be able to build a 707, maybe a 737, and maybe some other stuff. But right now, this is what I have, and I'm pretty happy with it. After you reassemble this giant, you just get to appreciate how big it really is. That's all I really have for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And please be sure to hit that like button, hit subscribe to never miss a plane like this, or planes like this. So as always, bye for now.